Hi, I'm Aaron Martins here at Table Rock Lake, middle of April, beautiful out. Here at the Sunline Riders Conference, here also at Tackle Warehouse, you guys are awesome. Um, I'm going to show you a couple techniques that might help you out, shaky head fishing. Uh, Tackle Warehouse is also carrying my new shaky head, which is awesome. I mean, I think so. You got to try them and tell me what you think, because I seem to like it a lot. It's caught a lot of fish for me. Um, I got uh, my Air Martin's Drop Mega Bass uh, spinning rod. Um, seven pound Sunline Sniper. Again, we talked about all the braid and stuff. You can do the Sunline uh, shooter with the, with the braided line to the reel. It works really good too. I prefer most of the time on a shaky head and drop shot straight seven pound Sniper. It's really hard to beat. You're going to start off by casting it. Booyah, I like that. It's kind of a short cast for me. Um, Traditionally, if I'm fishing like 15 feet of water, I cast out. I like to flip the bait over a little early. Um, you know, normally you're taught to let the bait sink all the way to the bottom before shifting it into gear or flipping your bail over. Uh, the reason I do that is to help pull the line down to help it get directly to my rod tip. You know, the fluorocarbon does sink, but also it takes it sinks slower than the weight. So if if I let it all go all the way to the bottom, you're gonna have a little bit of bow there. You're gonna have to wait for it, especially. If it does that and a fish eats it right then, you're going to have a little extra bow in there and, and it makes it harder for hook set. So maybe putting it in, uh, flipping it in, in gear, flipping the bait over, you know, five to ten feet before the bait gets to the bottom might help you a little bit. Another thing I do is I hold the rod loosely in my hands. Don't, you know, don't grip it hard. Kind of let, let it balance in your hands. I also hold, usually hold my rod and reel above the reel, above the, um, where it connects to the reel handle, like so. Finger on top is how I like to hold it, but I never hold it tight. I mean, even during a day and wind, whatever, uh, fish are biting, I'm still holding it really loose. I don't like to grip it tight. Um, it seems to help with fatigue. Uh, anytime you're using muscle to hold something, you're, you're also you know, burning, burning extra calories you don't need to burn. Plus, uh, maybe that kink in your neck, kink in your elbow might be caused from gripping your rod too hard. Uh, working at Shake Kids, pretty it's pretty fun i mean there's, there's a lot of ways to do it there's um there's dead stick in it where you cast it out which i've done really well especially in early spring fish are staging up on points the water's cold uh fishing conditions are the pressure's really high on lakes there's a lot of fish in some areas fish aren't biting good dead sticking is really good for that and dead sticking is is a term for you know fishing the bait really slow uh letting it sit there a lot another another way of dead sticking is when you do move the bait you're moving the head, not the bait. You're, you're basically trying to, to end your jig head across the bottom. It's the same thing with drop shot. So you're trying to not make your weight lift up off the bottom. You want it to actually stay in contact with the bottom the whole time. That's dead sticking. So in general, what I do is when I do that, I'm just shaking the head. I'm not, I'm not lifting the jig head up. I'm actually more like shaking the slack. I'm actually not, I'm bringing, when I shake it up, I'm actually just, just bringing it tight, the line taut, and then dropping back down. And that's causing that bait to actually just sit there and shake. That's a really good method for catching those really, really tough fish. Uh, another method that I use most of the time, you know, most of the lakes we go to fishing is pretty good. Um, you know, a lot of places, especially the elite tour goes, we fish in dynamite fisheries. Most time fishing that way, I'm fishing it probably 75% of the time I'm off the bomb swimming the jig head back to the boat. Let's switch sides to this side. So how we do that, and this is how I fish the shaky head the most, cast it out. Again, I, I put it in gear pretty quick because I want that line to be, I want that line to start, start pulling through the water column. I want it to start pulling directly to my rod tip to the bait as soon as possible. So a lot of times I actually flip it in gear before I even said. So as soon as it hits the water, I might let it sink three or four feet and kick it over. Depends how deep you're fishing. So the typical way that I fish probably 75% of the time with a shaky head, I let it hit the bomb. I shake it a few times in case the fish follows it down to the bomb. Maybe he sees the bait falling, goes and he's checking it out. You don't want to start working it fast. You want to kind of shake your shake the slack. I call it not shaking, not shaking the weight, not lifting the bait up too much. I just pulled the bait six or eight inches out, even though that's just what I do. I shook it first, and then I kind of pulled it, and then then I get into if the fish are biting decent. I snap it a lot. I touch the bomb, shake it, snap it a lot. And I'll do this until it might be a little bit too fast. Maybe the fish went a little bit slower. But I try to catch them as fast as I can. I'm trying to move the bait as quickly to back to the boat as I can, catching everything in between where I cast it in the boat. I want to, I want to be as efficient as possible. That's what fishing for a living uh, at a tour level, you have to be as efficient as possible. And 
you know, a dead stick in it the whole time is not going to work every time. It's going to, you have to cover, a lot of times, most of the time, you have to cover water to, to get the bait in front of a fish. Maybe the fish are spread out. Maybe they're, you know, one fish here and there's a fish 200 yards down. I don't want to fish slow to that 200 down fish. 200 yard down fish, I want to fish really fast. And when I come across that fish, if they're biting, he's going to bite it. So basically try, just try and get that bait in front of a fish, um, hopping it up off the bottom, lets the fish see it. And he'll go to the bait when it falls down. I shake it a few times light. And that's a lot of times when that bait hits the bottom, you shake it light. That's usually when you get a tick and the fish has got something off, set the hook. But uh, that's some little bit of tips. And um, hope they help you and good luck fishing. I'm going to go catch some fish now. Got that one. Let's see where that shaky is. This is a, a new shaky head I've been working on. Well, I've, I've made it about eight years ago. I carded have a chunk of lead. Um, Tackle Warehouse now is going to be selling them. Um, I put a lot of thought and, and effort in this shaky head. I actually started off with a file and a chunk of lead. And the neat thing about the shaky head is if you can see where it hooks him, 90% of the time you're going to hook him in, in this area. And you don't, I hardly ever hook fish in this area. It's always a cheek shot or through the nose. Um, most shaky, shaky heads don't really do that, I've noticed, over the, over the years. And I wanted to design one that actually did that. So besides hooking them, gosh, I use pliers usually to get it out most of the time. And it's, I even got it on TV me using pliers to pull my shaky head out. But uh, the cool thing is, it's a nice little spot. Um, check it out. It makes my shaky head kind of different. You got your, how it hangs, but when the fish eats that bait, it's a cam action. It actually, when the fish, this comes out of the fish's mouth, it always forces that hook into the fish's mouth. So wherever that point is in his mouth, that's where it sticks them. That's why you get so much, you get thicker part of their mouth, is what, what you want to get when you're fishing. Besides that, I designed it to stand up on the bottom of the lake, and it being oblong, or shaped differently than most shaky heads, when you shake this line, it, even if the bait happens to fall over, which almost never does, as soon as you work the shaky head, it picks the bait back up past vertical. And when you actually shake it, the worm actually wags like the dog wagging its tail. It's not up and down, it's side to side. And I've, and I've looked at it in swimming pools, and it's, it's incredible. And I've had I've given it some of the lead anglers to try out, and they told me the same thing. They were super impressed with it. But after eight years, you're going to be able to have them pretty soon at Tekka Warehouse. There's one right there. Good old table rock bass. That was another prime example of why a good action rod helps you out.